run a command line command, we first need to start a terminal, which is the program that gives us a command line. On Macintosh OS X, which I'm running here, one way to do that is using Spotlight, which you can use by clicking here, or you can do command space. And here, this is the default terminal that comes with, uh, with OS X. I like using iterm, which is what I've got here. I would, let me quit out of this. I would launch it normally by doing this. If you're using the virtual machine, you can just click an icon. I'll show you that here. Here's the VM. And you click on terminal, and it opens up a terminal. Now, if you look at this part here, this is called the prompt. And it, it prompts you to action. It's not something you should type out yourself. It's something that's supplied by the command line terminal. So if you look here, you can see this prompt is a little simpler. And it's the same as the one that iTerm uses. here. We'll move on to running a real command in just a moment, but first I want to show you the general anatomy of a command. You can look here. You can see that the command line starts with a prompt, and that's something you will never type in yourself. That's something that is supplied by the command line. This is a common error. People will type in a dollar sign and wonder why it doesn't work. It's because that's part of the prompt. But then after the prompt, you type in a command. Many Unix commands take options indicated with uh, this dash and a letter. There's also often a long form that uses two dashes and a word. Then often there's an argument to the command, in this case, a file called foo.txt. And then the command line ends with a cursor indicating where new characters will appear when you type them. So for example, here there's a box, a little gray box, here there's a white box, and so on.